So I have graduated now to being able to do the clap on my own. I must be getting better. Okay, so what I'm here to do today, this is the fourth day of making icons. First day was uh, trimming the boards down to the size that I, I want them to be. Second day was making the glue, making the gesso, and applying just one layer of glue onto the surface of the board without there being any cloth. So that was the second day. Third day, I attached the fabrics, which is just this, that's what this level is right here, just had the fabric. There's no gesso on the surface yet. So that was day three, day two. Then today, or yesterday, I came in and did uh, five layers of gesso on this, this board. Both have two boards here of this board. And so today we'll be doing levels, doing uh, coding six through 10. And for the smaller boards, that'll probably just be like practice boards for trying out new ideas of, of icons. Um, I may only go with 10, 10 layers of gesso on those. This one here, because it's gonna be hopefully a, a finished icon for the meditation hall, I'll probably go all the way to 15 on this. So this one here has five coats. And as I can see it right now, I can see there's lots of little lines that were caused by the, the bristles of the paintbrush as I was putting the, the gesso on. But also too, I can see some of the fabric, some of the texture from the fabric is coming through. It's almost like there's these little dimples, um, something coming through through the fabric. And uh, um, that's perfectly fine at this point. So today, the only difference between what I'll be doing on this board versus what I did yesterday is that uh, as I'm building this up, maybe the next one or two coats, I'll just continue it the same. But once I get to about seven or eight, um, these little areas here where I can see these dimples or feel it, as I feel the whole board, it just feels a little bit like, like sandpaper, not extremely coarse, but uh, I, can, I can feel the texture of this. It's not smooth at all. And uh, so as I do like coat seven or eight, um, after it's 90% dry, it's kind of like this, this board over here. It's still a little tacky. Wouldn't do it on that one yet. But uh, um, I'll come over just with a finger or two and just very lightly sort of go over and smooth out the surface. And uh, the, as, it's, as the gesso is about 90% dry or a little bit more, it still is, you can still move it around just slightly on the surface. And so I'll be with my, just very lightly with my finger trying to smooth out some of the, those dimples and little imperfections uh, where I have too much gesso in certain areas. And then later in the day, as I get closer to 10, um, I will probably use my entire hand, the palm. Might just get it a little bit wet in the water and then just doing really hard very hard actually rubbing and just trying to almost like using my hand as sandpaper to level out the entire surface and so that would be the process of what I'm doing today then tomorrow I would do coats 11 through 15 and doing the same thing uh, with my hand making sure it's as uniform as possible so that would be day five and then day six, um, after it's all dry, I would come in with some very, very fine sandpaper. Here's some uh, you know, coarser sandpaper I was just using to, to do the edges. Uh, but I would take something like, probably starting off with like uh, something around 250 grit paper. And uh, depending on how smooth I had it with my hands, but going over something really smooth and maybe even going up as high as like a thousand grit sandpaper, just slowly working it up. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but uh, at a certain level, like a professional icon board would look almost like uh, marble, uh, polished marble, just really uh, quite beautiful and uh, almost mirror-like. I actually kind of like the scratches left in from the sandpaper. It uh, gives, gives it texture. And I, I, it's kind of an appearance that I, I like. It kind of brings in the element of dukkha uh, that life isn't always perfect. And I think that imperfection adds character, but it also is, I think it's sometimes beautiful. So 
and this is heated. The, the gesso, the, um, so you're just heating it in the water there. And it's a little runnier than I would have worked. Oh, actually, before I do this, what I normally do is just with a little bit of this hot water, just uh, introduce a little bit of moisture, just, just barely touching this uh, paintbrush in the water there so almost nothing comes out. But just uh, getting the surface wet from the last time before it dried, after it dried. And I think, I think what is happening here when I do this is that uh, you're just making the surface a little more receptive to the next layer of gesso. It, uh, just by softening this, these layers that are on here, when I add the next layer to this, it's, uh, they're, they're chemically like bonding together. So it's one layer instead of um, 15 separate layers. It can almost become one solid mass. So, yeah, that's looking good. That was a very, very light. I, in the past, I've sometimes used a, um, a spray bottle and just very light mist over the whole thing. Um, it's just more equipment I didn't think I needed, so if I have a paintbrush and it works. I also, when I was cleaning my brushes yesterday, I, uh, um, I try to keep the, you know, as, I, as I clean this, you can see there's a little bit of chalk in here. So when I clean the brushes, I try to keep it and let, let it settle to the bottom. And then the next morning, dump off the, the top bit of the water. And so there's a little bit of chalk in here. So I saved this, so as I'm pre-wetting the surface down. I'll use this with a little bit of ch the chalk and the, the glue that's in there. So, you know, don't, I'm trying to be frugal. So, this process here, I'll just paint it just exactly like I did yesterday. And I do try to alternate which direction that I that I paint in. So this coat I'm doing this way, and then the next one I'll go this way. I may even do a couple uh, coats that way. I'm going to clean up a little mess here that I made. I just use the scrap fabric that I had here. A bit of hot water. This will be a potentially finished board there, so it's going to get that off. Come back to my icon board. The paintbrush is getting kind of there we go. I'm just sort of going any which direction here, getting the stuff, getting the gesso on the board. And then my final coat, though, I will definitely have it trying to be all in one direction. I'm just trying to get an even, as fairly even coat as I can possibly get over the whole board. areas where I can see it's not covered. I'll just kind of add more to those areas. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. And I'll just, uh, just add a little bit of moisture so I can move the gesso around a little bit here, but I'll try to get this this layer all the way brush strokes in this direction. 
And I'm just trying to avoid creating any places where there's obviously un uneven amounts of gesso. I don't want to get some places that don't have any or are missing skipping areas and then having some areas build up too high. Like I could just see there was a little bit of a, from the brush stroke, a deep, deep indentation there. So if I just go over this with this gesso being wet and the paintbrush being dipped in the water there, it still allows me to, to completely move that around and level off the high areas and hopefully fill in the low areas. Now Father Damien was telling me, that even though I'm just doing this one time here, because I've been adding more and more, this actually may constitute, say, two, two layers of, of gesso that I've done, even though it was still kind of wet. And so that's the finished board. I don't know if you can see the details of this, but it's you know still very... And every time I use this paintbrush, it's going to be these highs and lows of the, the paintbrush marks on it. And that's why later today, when this is drier, I'll start using my finger. I don't know if you can come over here to this board here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is fairly, fairly dry now, probably even too dry. So if I just put my finger in here, I'll be doing this later, but you can see the like, area there that's... Okay, yeah. So that's too much to, to do that, but there's a... Uh, Yes, yeah, like areas right here, you can see the dimples. And so as I just barely lightly, um, I won't try to get them all out the very first time, but uh, I can level out some of them. Yeah, so the I feel here, I put water, it's kind of tacky right there. So I'm actually kind of moving some of the, very, very lightly, able to move some of the gesso on the surface like over here where there's those dimples because this is dry so over here actually before I do my next layer I think I'm going to go over all of these boards dry completely now just use my finger but I'm going to try to just level out the surface and I can see I'm doing that pretty hard and it's not making it oh, it doesn't look Probably from the angle there doesn't look uh, that much smoother, but definitely so like from here you can see those those dimples where here where I've done it, it's, it's less. And then theoretically, then as I do five more layers, that'll start blending into the into the board. And then also to getting 15 layers of, of gesso on here when we we do use the sandpaper. To me, it's it's kind of appalling how much dust comes off because uh, that was material we put onto the board. But uh, I think you're doing 15 layers just so when you do sand it, you used to have five or six still <laughs> left in the board, maybe. But, uh, hopefully, not taking that much off. So yeah, so that's what I'll do. You can see not much is sticking to my hands, but I'll just. Uh, wait for both of these boards to dry. I'll let them dry for about an hour. Come back in, I'll do this. Very aggressive, I think, with this time here. Um, making the uh, board a little smoother. And I'll come back and I'll do one more coat of uh, gesso. That'll be coat number seven. Come back after lunch, do number eight. Go for a long walk, which is part of my icon practice sauntering in the forest here and come back and do nine before having a cup of tea and then I'll do ten uh, before I do my evening puja. Have a great day! Okay, so now I can come back. Oh, you're starting again? No, no, okay. Starting again? Okay, let me stop. No, don't, don't, don't stop.